couple slides to kick this off. Yeah, yeah. Pardon me for my weird Canadian accent. <laughs> I hope you people can understand me. <laughs> test, test. Is it you picking this up? All right, all right. So, uh, so hi, I'm Mike Blinkovic. Uh, I'm the executive director of the Eclipse Foundation. And we are here today to talk about uh, Java EE moving to Eclipse. And let me you get, go just go down the path and introduce yourselves. My name is Heiko Rupp from Red Hat Middleware, so the JBoss division as people know it. Um, and I'm working on a micro profile, and so it's the, the EE4J is, is sort of a natural uh, next step. Hi, I'm Kevin Sutter. I'm from IBM, and I've been working on Java EE. I'm doing EE4J, and I've been working on MicroProfile. Uh, my name is Dmitry Kornilov. I'm from Oracle. I'm leading uh, some uh, specifications which are part of uh, Java Enterprise Edition, and I'm also working on various Java EE components. And I'm David Abassé, also for, uh, from Oracle, so I'm basically the Java EE evangelist. Uh, so, I just have a couple of slides here to try to just basically level set everybody on what's actually happening. Uh, so, uh, this has been obviously been in the news a fair bit, but the, the short version is the Java Enterprise Edition is moving lock, stock, and barrel to the Eclipse Foundation. Uh, so, that means that um, it's going to be the reference implementations, the TCKs, and a new process is going to be devised for doing specs. Um, so that's going to be, uh, uh, and we have to invent a new brand, and we have to invent a new compatibility program, and all kinds of fun stuff like that. Uh, for those who haven't already, if you are interested in this topic, you should really subscribe to ee4j-community at eclipse.org as the, uh, uh, as well how the conversation is happening. and. Uh, I've been impressed by how much conversation is happening. I've you know, just basically for a couple of weeks there was effectively a denial of service attack on my inbox. Um, but and this is happening uh, with the support of Oracle, IBM, and Red Hat. And since the original announcement with those three vendors, we've also had Tommy Tribe and Piera jump in, and uh, and I'm very happy to say that on uh, yesterday at the Eclipse Foundation Board of Directors meeting, uh, we approved the top-level project charter for EE for J. So that's been uh, that's been so that's like a tangible progress. And the initial PMC is made up of IBM, Oracle, and Red Hat, uh, but uh, also Tommy Child Piera and Ivar Grimstad, who is the uh, spec lead for MVC has publicly said that he's going to be bringing MVC to EE4J as well and is the initial PMC lead. Um, and we, we thought that was a really good thing to do to make sure that people didn't misinterpret this as some vendor-led. Um, I mean, obviously, the vendors are very important, but uh, this is really about trying to build a new and interesting community around this code and this, and this, and this project. Um, so what are we trying to do here? First is make this an open process. Um, this is all about collaboration. So, uh, you know, I think you know what we consider the one of the primary values of the Eclipse Foundation is providing a model of project governance um, that allows everybody from the largest companies to the individual contributor who has an itch to scratch. Everybody is welcome, and everybody can contribute to a project on on a level playing field. So that's that, you know that is the model that we're trying to get to. In calendar year 2018, um, we have a lot of work to do. Um, so for those who sort of know anything about sort of the Eclipse process and how we bring projects on board, at this point, it looks like what we are talking about in terms of scale is you know, roughly 40 new projects. Um, so it's a huge pile of code and technology. Um, and, and the projects are actually sort of the easy part because we have um, They've been at least been open source for a while. Uh, the TCKs are also going to be open sourced, and they've up they've been confidential up to this point. 
So getting that open source is going to be is going to be fun. Um, technology evolution. Uh, get hopefully the micro profile folks will join the party at some point, um, and we can all be one big happy family. Um, cats and dogs living together, um, and uh, yeah. So benefits. Um, you can obviously tell some product manager or marketing guy wrote this. Uh, so actually, he decided later that agile was not the word of choice. It's supposed to be nimble. Yeah, I guess I got an old version of the slides because agile is so old now. If you want to be if you want to be cool and sexy, you got to be nimble. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Guys get paid money for this shit. It's amazing. Um, flexible, um, so really trying to bring a modern open source approach to evolving this technology in the future. Uh, open, uh, so that's a, that's really what you know. Clips Foundation is here to make sure. Compatible, um, so there will be an, a compatibility program. Uh, there will be backwards compatibility. One of the very first major milestones from a technology point of view is going to be shipping a EE8 compliant. Um, uh, implementation from the EE for J project, uh, which would be a when we get to it, will be an enormous milestone. There will be beer, um, and basically get all these vendors together um, collaborating. And I have been talking enough, and now so everybody on the panel, there's a couple of questions up there. You, you don't have to answer them all; just pick the ones that you want. But why is moving Java EE to EE for J important? What do you think we can actually accomplish in the first year? What would you consider a success in the first year? Uh, where uh, can the community go to help this process move it forward? And how is your company going to be participating in EE for J? Um, so, you don't have to answer all these. Yeah. So, um, for Red and, and for Red Hat, we are open source uh, leaders. So we are having been doing open source all the time. So for us, it's quite quite natural to have finally everything up in the open and being able that people can contribute and, and not only company but also the individuals. So let me make an example. A friend of mine, he's doing a lot of consulting around Java performance and when he, he's saying, okay, I need an account of, 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 of that type in the VM to better analyze the state or things, in the past this was sort of uh, impossible to do it on a global level. He could come to Red Hat and say, okay, I pay you money or my customer pays you money if you do that. But still then, if they want to switch to IBM, they would have to go to the same process. And now he can at be address this at the level of the specification and then of, of for a next upcoming EE4J release, which I think is a huge uh, benefit. Okay, so I'm going to emphasize the TCK, uh, getting open sourced. I, I think that is a huge benefit for the larger community. There's been vendors out there, I mean, even Apache for a while, they, they were kind of shut out of that because they were not able to access the TCK because of you know a rift between Oracle and Apache with getting access to it. And now being open source with the TCKs, all of them will be available to everybody. And I think that will be very key. So I think that's one of the huge benefits of this move. Okay, so I'm number three. So I think uh, uh, it becomes difficult to choose a topic. I'm going to put you on the spot. Uh, what is your company going to do in the first year to make this a success? Ah, uh, okay. okay. And, and he has a lot, uh, of, a lot of, <laughs> of things to do on his plate. That, so so uh, uh, basically, what are we going to do? First of all, we are going to pass everything to open source community, which is not easy as well, right? Because we are working on a lot of projects. Mike said that it's about 40 projects, but I would say that it's about 80 plus repositories to pass, right? So it's a huge amount, really, right? So uh, I think that I bet that now Eclipse Con is around things, about things, but Java EE is a small part of that. I bet that next year, when we meet here, uh, EE4J will be one of the main huge topics, right? Because a lot of stuff uh, go into Eclipse Foundation. So from the Oracle side, we need to prepare all the projects. We need to go through the legal processes. We need to actually physically transfer the projects to Eclipse Foundation. And after that, uh, we will need to provide support for all of that. So we are not going to just pass 
exit technique and say, okay, guys, it's done, right? So now DMFs uh, how how we want, right? So we're actually going to support. It. They are going to help. And as Kevin mentioned, TCKs. No one sees uh, sees uh, seed TCK. So sorry, my English. <laughs> uh, TCKs before, right? So uh, from our perspective, we need to help community to get involved there, right? So. I think I answered. Yep. So maybe I can uh, comment on on the why. Well, w one of the things that. Uh, yeah. So, so yes. Yeah. Right. So why? Yeah. I'm, well, it's just for the recording. Yeah. I know. It looks stupid. So why? Well, uh, so we've just released uh, one month ago Java 8, and Java 7 was released four years ago. So that model where basically takes years to move from one version of the platform was something that works fine back then, but clearly those days, it's totally some, something that uh, developers and the market is willing to accept. So hopefully by moving uh, to uh, E4J, we will have a more nimble process that will allow us to have the platform evolve more quickly and more rapidly and meets uh, basically the, the demand uh, in a more agile uh, fashion. So the, would, if, if this happens, then you did good. So the, the, well, I think the, the first major milestone would 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 be to have bits of e 4 j 1.0 that would pass the TCK. Yes, or all of it. All of it. The, yeah, the, the TCK. The TCK. I mean, it's everything. It's so. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, something that you can run yeah. and that pass the TCK. That's, that's what I was going to say too. So. Uh, The first milestone would be passing the TCK, yeah. and then. Just, just trying to set, just trying I, to I actually, to I actually, I think that a, a much larger success. I mean, this is a technical one that can be solved. Is to have a good EJ EE for JCP that's working not for the vendors but for everyone, where we have the possibility to really um, embrace the whole community around um, Java EE or EE for J, right? So that it's e really good to bring people in and make, make, make allow them to contribute in a in an easy way. Of course, there is the the IP um, and ECA or how it's called Eclipse Com Eclipse Contributor Agreement yeah. thingy. But apart from that hurdle, it should be very easy to to initially contribute. Perhaps not with a large code drop unseen, but at least gets ideas in um, smaller fixes, additions to the TCK. So that it's just very clear on how to do that for everyone. Anybody else, or should we open it up? Question. So, so, so first, maybe a, a, a comment. So, E4J is about uh, Java 8. So, b basically, oh, well, we are not getting rid of the past, but we one of well being backward compatible with Java 7, 6, and so forth is not something that uh, we would like to tackle. Uh, and then, yeah, the the backlog. Uh, I I don't know. So that's why we we basically took a snapshot E8, and we'll take it from there. Uh, so about the the EE for JCP, so this the the to be defined spec process. Uh, I, so th this is the first time these guys have heard this, but my my personal radical agenda for the uh, for the spec process going forward is I actually want to take the entire EE community and change it so that they think of code first, not spec first. Uh, one of the things that's kind of slightly drives me crazy when you read the EE4J community list is everybody is talking about how do I influence the spec. And ultimately what I want to get to is a world that's kind of like the way Spring works where it's code first. You get something working and then if maybe there's a chance that somebody might want to spec it later. But 
I've been in the Java ecosystem for 20 years, and it has always driven me batshit crazy that the idea is that you do, you do innovation by writing specifications. That's just a completely stupid idea, and it's my personal mission to try to fix that. Not that I have an opinion. <laughs> <laughs> but just to emphasize that a little bit, I mean, that's what we're doing with MicroProfile. That, that's what started the whole effort with MicroProfile was to try to get stuff moving quicker. And so, yes, we've done code first. I mean, yes, we're doing specifications for the API, but we're doing code first. And then, you know, because we didn't know that all this was going to happen with Java EE moving to the open, we actually took one of our um, features called the configuration, and we are moving that. You know, we're trying to take it through the current JSR process. Now, that's because we didn't know everything was happening with Java EE. So we have to figure out, okay, when do we switch over from the JSR process to this new one that we're going to develop out in Eclipse. But um, that just kind of shows what we were trying to do with MicroProfile, and we want to grow it up for all of Java EE. Yeah, this is actually a nice point. So, which is what I was going to say, basically, but your question came first, right? So, code first approach is great, right? But uh, we should not forget about standards, right? We should standardize stuff because standards, which is what lives long, right? So, people want to use standards just to make sure that what they've done will last for years, right? Yep. It's not like I chose one implementation and after a year, this implementation changed to backwards and compatible and I can't really upgrade to the new one and uh, so we should actually standardize which approach we choose it's under question it's on discussion at the moment right but the disadvantages of JCP what is now it's very slow right so the process is very slow and has to be revised has to be reconfigured the way that it becomes more convenient it becomes faster it becomes more open and it becomes community driven so which is what we are planning to do I think what we need here is sort of a two-step process. One side, an incubator, where you do really something like code first, and then sort of test it out and document it. And when it's documented and tested, then you probably move it to the, to the long-term support between quotes, right? And there you have the specification, and then the implementers basically take the, the test bed from the incubator and, and use that, but you must not forget that when you have Spring, it's one community or one company that drives all that, that has the, the, the major say on it. And here we are a multi-vendor initiative uh, or, or group initiative where also Apache Tommy Drive or the Apache Tommy project uh, wants to implement what we have. So if we only have a reference implementation, so basically everyone has to take the reference implementation because this is the only documentation. And I don't think this is a good one. And I would add, like Eclipse Jetty is another project that, like uh, uh, Apache Tommy, that has the same same kind of interest. And I just want to make clarify what I said earlier about code first. Is I absolutely agree that in the end, standards do matter, and compatibility is one of the four core values of what we're trying to do here. And so, you know, compatibility is still very key because it's the only way. No, the advantage is we have a multi-vendor ecosystem here. There are multiple vendors standing here saying that they're going to do this. The only way that works is if you do have some notion, a strong notion of compatibility. And so that's absolutely key. Yeah, I mean, I just wanted to say in support of Code mistake or change the spec or recode it. And so, as long as you're iterating, the 
told you, but you have to be prepared to throw away any mistakes you make. If you, put the, if you code first and you only code, you end up ossifying a bad design. Yep. We're going to pull their, when we ship a Java EE8 compliant thing from EE today, we will be pulling their stuff. Once a decade. <laughs> no. No. Now you're going to be quoted. <laughs> I, we haven't decided that yet, Emily, but we, we want to be faster than four years. Yeah. <laughs> and, and again, and again, this may, may play in, into the incubating versus long-term stability game. So we could have a, an incubating release or release with incubating features every quarter or every half year, but uh, the long-term support is, is perhaps only every half year or year or something like this. So. To, into play. I mean, we have multiple vendors, so a vendor might decide that uh, is he for j uh, product will be supported for the next uh, five, ten years. I mean, that's something that comes in addition to the pure technology side and specification side of e for j I'll, I'll start and then you can fill in the holes. Um, so the, the one thing that we're talking about is what's the process going to be to seed these first communities? Because we want to get um, a certain set of committers immediately ready to go. And so we're looking at, okay, who are the current expert group members? And who are the you know current vendors that are participating in these different technologies? And try to get that community initially set up so that when these projects go live, we've got a large set of committers ready to go. And then, of course, encourage additional people as they um, come forward. So let me just, let me just add a little more. I was gonna, so everything he said is exactly right. I just want to add a little context, which is the default rule at the Eclipse Foundation is when a new project starts, the committers are the people that are coming with that code, right? That's sort of the default behavior. We are sort of modifying the, our traditional rules in this case specifically to make sure that we're injecting more diversity and more community into the initial committer list from the get-go. So as these projects get uh, started at Eclipse, there's going to be every single time there's a new project proposal going up, there's going to be a, a list of initial committers and a list of interested parties. If you have been an expert on, a, on the expert group, or you can demonstrate that you have working knowledge of this code or this domain, then there will be a, we haven't yet to determine exactly how it'll work, but put your name forward and say, I would be, I would like to be a committer on this project as, they, as they're built. I'm not, I don't understand the question. Yeah, we are, it's, it's a public document already. So we, so you meant like right. the, your initial seed list of committers for Project X. When are you going to go email the expert group and say, hey, would you like to join? Okay. We just created a top level project yesterday. Next week. What have you done for me lately? Yep. <laughs> Uh, like literally, like next week or the week after. Okay. Yeah. yeah. The other thing is, once you have signed the ECA, you are con can be a contributor and you can directly send pull requests. Uh, of course, you cannot commit them yourself until unless you are a committer, but you can directly start to contribute and, and, and send them around. And if you still, if it's this waiting period is still too long, just come to micro profile. There you can. <laughs> 
we should maybe also avoid to create too much backlog on the other side, you know. So, I mean, uh, yeah, we are just at the beginning of this. We have just announced uh, our intention to open source Java e like two months ago. So, to, well, it was uh, August 16. Oh, okay. So, I remember that date. <laughs> yeah. so I just remember it. when you said you were coming to Eclipse. <laughs> yeah, d okay, okay. <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, I mean, we still have a lot of things. I mean, w on the process side, we have a lot of things to do. So the only thing is that I just want to avoid to create too much backlog that we also have to migrate uh, in that process. Uh, just quickly. So uh, basically, when project is there, committers will be invited, right? So uh, it works like that. And if you feel that you are not invited, just let us know. If you feel that others are invited, let us know. Yeah. And I think what BJ is really harping on is where are we going to do this? And really, we are, and it'll happen within a week because we've got certain projects that we're looking to migrate initially because we want to test the whole process. Um, I know Eclipse Link is one. Um, let's see, Yasin. Yes. Yasin. Yasin is another one. Um, I don't know, there were a couple others that we were looking as the initial set. So it, it's going to start very quick. But these projects are already a part of the Eclipse Foundation. Yeah, 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 yeah. Those two are. Uh, the, the, new, like the brand new projects, I know we have, we have, we have, we have five projects. Yeah, we've been talking about a f list of five, but I couldn't even tell you which ones they were. Jersey's in there. So, oh, oh cool. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, so uh, basically, uh, where is Jax, RS, and Jersey? Right, uh, where is Tiles and DepSocket? Where is OpenMQ? Where is Mojara? Uh, where is JSON Processing? And where is something else I forgot? <laughs> <laughs> One more project I forgot. My JSP, right? No, JSF maybe, right? JSF, JSF, yeah, JSF, yeah. So, I mean, we have to write, actually write a project proposal and so on and start this process off, but I think. Well, like I'm expect literally expecting that within two weeks you'll see the first proposal for the first batch of stuff going up on the Eclipse website. It'll be announced on the community list, and of course, and, and discussions can happen. But uh, it, it's it's going to be happening quite quickly. Ish. <laughs> GitHub, yes. Yes. Yep. No, so yes, so my apologies. Uh, so we got totally s um, crushed by some uh, spam bots from China. Uh, so we've shut off this. Uh, not I know. <laughs> you know, as soon as as soon as that came out of my mouth, it's just like ah, yeah, not your fault. I got that. All right, you don't even live there. I know that. Uh, the the um, it's uh, we got totally crushed. So actually, the only way you so we shut off the subscription through the 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 form. You have to actually do the email like you send uh, like ee four j dash community dash subscribe and and do it that way. So my apologies, but that that's what's going on. So we uh, we'll hopefully get that fixed soon. But um, but that's what's that's what's happening. Yeah, you know. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, we we got a off. We got other sessions. Yep. Other questions. Yes. So I never asked the question. OpenGDK. So OpenGDK has story. nothing to do with the uh, project. Well, I mean, actually, it has a bit. There, there are EE packages that also uh, are sorry. That's, that's correct. That's one of the things that, well, no, they are they dropped from OpenGDK at some point. Yeah. So, so yeah. Uh, that's something that we'll have to figure out. But uh, so those package will be dropped uh, from OpenGDK, uh, I think, in uh, the next release. So that's something that we have to figure out because I mean uh, we are also using those packages. So, yeah. So and the package you need into the E4J. 
Um, if you look right now, they are anyway managed on the Java e side. So they are part of the GDK, but they are managed on by the Java e organization. So, I mean, that's something that we'll have to figure out. But yes, that's, I mean, we are aware of that. Part of, my, part of my vision for the future is that we no longer care about the Oracle org chart. <laughs> I, have a, I have a question as no one dares to ask that. Do we know, know more about the package names? Yep. So, so, so existing API will continue to use the ex well their package name. I mean, if we want to provide compatibility with Java 8, there's no other way. Uh, but for new API, uh, they will have to use different package name. Re related to that, I don't know if you have an answer to this, but one thing I started thinking about is as we move to support Java 9, and we if we want to support modules, can we call modules like Java X dot servlet? I don't have the answer. Yeah, <laughs> I just thought of it this week, so it's something that we're going to have to bring up. Yes. Okay, so what about some other dependency or some other stack? So, 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 so this stack will have to be linear yeah. still, like not like Java. Yeah. So, so if, if you invent a NoSQL spec or whatever, right? It must have not Java X but something else, right? But right. the current specs, CDI, JSON B, JSON P, oh. whatever we have, it should continue using for backwards compatibility Java X. Right. Even Correct? You, uh, I can even create yeah. new yep. Yep. Yeah. Even if it's maintenance release. Yeah, the, the thing that we'll have to discuss is how we evolve those specs. I mean, like servlet, CDI, and so on. Something that we'll have to discuss. So with maintenance release, you mean? With maintenance release, you mean something like servlet 4.0 MR1 or servlet 7.0? Yeah, no, but can, can servlet 7.0 still use the Java X dot servlet namespace? As long as OK. Yes, OK. No, because the we are out of time, but we have a buff. Right. So we yes. have a buff. Yes. Um, there is After the beer. Yeah. So it should be I fun. <laughs> 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 okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.